In this video, we'll take a look at a more powerful statistical technique called polynomial regression. Applying a polynomial regression should significantly improve your forecasts in situations where linear models are falling short. Now, before we jump into an Excel example, let's take a look at what polynomial regression is all about. Polynomial regression is uh, another version of a regression model that uses polynomial equations to predict the independent variables. We usually use it when uh, the linear regression model is not good enough to predict uh, the way our values are developing between the two variables. So for example, here we have the dependent variable a listing price for uh, properties. And then we have the land plot size being the independent variable. So essentially, we're trying to see how the size of the land plot influences the listing price we have some data points and you see here that a linear regression, although it seems that uh, it's working, actually when we plot a polynomial regression uh, here, we see that it's much better at fitting our data set, meaning that it would give us a much better equation to predict future values or further values. So for example, what if the land plot is 700 square meters? The polynomial equation here would allow us to better predict what the listing price would be. A few things that it's important to remember is that the target variable, y, the dependent variable, has an additive relation with the set of independent variables, meaning that this equation is additive, so we're only adding uh, different independent variables or we're only adding the, the effect from them. Then the relationship has to be linear or curvy linear and uh, the predictors, the, the independent variables, have to be independent of each other. However, uh, the polynomial regression model is very sensitive to outliers and generally there are not many tools to identify outliers in uh, nonlinear models. So this is what a typical linear regression equation looks like. It has a linear yield increase, meaning that uh, for each added unit of x1, our uh, predictor, we get precisely b1 units added to our uh, target variable. More often than not, linear regression doesn't cut it when we're trying to fit a model to a data set. So we often use the quadratic polynomial regression where the dependent variable depends on the independent variable on the predictor, but uh, the relationship is not exactly linear. And just for information, this is the general polynomial regression model. And uh, if you want to learn more about the statistical part of this, I'm going to link an article in the description down below that goes into much more detail. In this video, I want to focus more on the practical application and how we can actually fit a polynomial regression model to our data set and use it to predict further values. So a polynomial regression regression model has uh, orders or degrees. So a first degree n equals one is uh, essentially a simple linear regression with this function that we already looked at. And then the, the most common, the second order polynomial represents a quadratic equation with a parabolic curve, what we saw uh, earlier. And the third degree one is a cubic equation. And this is the, the quadratic one here and uh, it's essentially the same as a multiple linear regression. This is the multiple linear regression equation. If we assume that x2 is equal to x1 square up here, those are essentially the same, but we uh, analyze them a bit differently. So in uh, a multiple re linear regression, we would look at the different predicted variables and uh, analyze it that way. While in a polynomial uh, regression analysis, we're mostly looking at the function as a whole. And in practical terms, we mostly rely on uh, like looking at the plot and seeing whether the, the curve is fitting our data correctly. In terms of uh, fitting our models, we uh, fit the polynomial regression using the least squares method. And I'm not going to go into uh, detail uh, here, but uh, I'm going to leave an article that you can check out if you want to learn more and dive deeper into the least squares method. More degrees in a polynomial regression model usually tend to result in better performance, but we must be careful because if we add too many orders to our uh, polynomial regression model, we may end up overfitting our model, meaning that it would work perfectly for the training data, the one we trained it on, 
but it actually wouldn't uh, work well for predicting additional values. Now let's take a look at uh, an example in Excel. So here we have campaigns that we run. This is our marketing spend, and this is the conversion rate that we achieved. Our goal is to predict if we spent more, what would the conversion rate be? So the first thing we can do is we can just grab those two and uh, add a chart and we're going to use a scatter plot chart. So here we have our conversion rate and uh, those are our uh, data points. I'm going to right click on the series and add a trend line and let's go with a linear uh, trend line. And you see that this is uh, how this line fits our data set. We can also display the equation and the R squared. If we zoom in a bit, you see our equation Move this and uh, let's make it a bit bigger and bolded so it's easier to see. So this is our uh, equation. Y, the variable that we're predicting, the conversion rate equals 0.0145x, our marketing spend minus 5.24 and our R squared, which is essentially showing us how good the line fits. Our data set is pretty high, 0.73. As those are a bit rounded, let's uh, use uh, the slope and intercept formula to calculate them. So here, I'm gonna say slope and intercept, and uh, this is our slope, and this is our intercept. So we can use the slope formula in Excel, which asks for the known y's and known x's. So y's are what we are predicting, the conversion rate. I'm gonna select all the conversion rates that I have, and then for known x's, I'm gonna select all the marketing spends. Enter, we can expand that a bit more, and it's uh, this here, our slope. Our intercept, we can calculate using the intercept formula. And it takes the same values, known y's and known x's. Hit OK. And this is our intercept here. So we can essentially use those two and this equation to predict further values. So for example, if I add here five more, I can just move that to the side. And I'm uh, also going to move those. I can have here linear regression. Actually, let's make it a different color. And I can use my linear regression model to calculate that. So this would be equal to my slope. I'm gonna fix that with F4 multiplied by my X, which is my marketing spend, plus my intercept F4, fix it. And this is my predicted value. I can copy that down and uh, now if uh, we just move those out of the way, we don't need them anymore. And if I expand this to include also my linear regression, you see here, those are the additional five values that we calculated and they sit exactly on the trend line because they follow the exact same equation. However, it looks like I have like a more of a curvy linear uh, relationship here. You see that as my marketing spend increases, I actually seem to be getting more in terms of conversion. So this would leave me, lead me to believe that uh, linear regression might not be the right choice here. So what I'll do is for our polynomial regression, let's go up here and uh, add another trend line. Select those, add trend line, now switch it to polynomial and to make it an order of two. I'm gonna remove this equation going to select my polynomial and I'm going to say show equation and display R squared. And actually, let me bring back selecting the other trend line, just going to bring back the R squared. You see that uh, the R squared for the polynomial regression is higher than the R squared for the linear regression, meaning that uh, polynomial regression of uh, second order better fits our uh, data. So now we essentially here we have the variables B2, B1 and B0. And uh, since those are like really small, I cannot like take them from here. So we'll have to calculate them. 
B2, B1, B0, and we'll use a combination of index and linest to functions in Excel. This is the linest function. This is the documentation on Microsoft's website. I suggest you look it up. There's a lot of information here on how exactly it works, how we can use it. But what you need to know essentially is that this is where we uh, apply the least squares method. So this is where we use the least squares method to fit a straight line to our uh, variables. I'm gonna go back here. And I'm gonna say that this is index. Here I have the lines function. It takes my known y's, which are my conversion rates, takes my known x's, which are those here. And uh, keep in mind that we're only using the initial data, the data that we have. We're not using any predicted data here. And then I'm gonna bring that to the power of one, two as an array, close that. And I'm gonna take one, the row number, enter, and it shows as zeros because, yep, all the way down here. This is my uh, B2. Then B1 will essentially be exactly the same formula, but uh, apart from the uh, row number one, I'm gonna give it a row number of two, hit enter, and uh, this is how we get B1, the second variable here. And then B0 will do the same formula, but instead of, column two, we'll have column three, and uh, we get our B0 variable here. Now we can use those to calculate the same forecast using the polynomial regression model. So essentially we have Y equals B2 multiplied by X squared minus B1 multiplied by X plus B0. So here we'll have our B2 multiplied by our X. This is our X, the marketing spend squared to the power of two plus, I'm using plus because the variable here is with a negative sign, plus this multiplied by our X value plus our B0 here, our variable B0. And uh, I forgot to fix those. So I4, I want to fix, I5, I want to fix, and I6, I want to fix. Now I can copy those down. And uh, this is how I get my predictions using the polynomial model that uh, we just fitted to our data. And you see that those are way higher. So my assumption was correct that as we spend more, we actually gain more benefit. So now let's go ahead and uh, make sure that we add those to our data here. And now we should have, yep, now you see that uh, our linear regression predictions are here and our polynomial regressions predictions are here. And they seem much more reasonable when we compare the two based off how our data has this curve going upwards. This makes way more sense than this. And that's essentially how we can use the polynomial regression model to forecast data in Excel. If you wanna learn more about the theory behind this uh, practical application, I highly suggest to check out the articles in the description down below. Uh, check out some Microsoft's documentation on the Linus function and maybe even just Google polynomial regression and learn more about it. Now you know how to forecast data trends, but if you wanna learn how to do financial modeling, I've created a five hour beginner friendly financial modeling course that's available absolutely for free right here on YouTube. You can check it out in this playlist up here. It will take you from an empty Excel spreadsheet all the way through to a fully dynamic assumptions driven financial model. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the first video. Thank you.